Hi FlossTube, it's Helen D. I'm back with another tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to put together one of these block finishes. Uh, these are charts by Hands On Design. I've also heard them called a mattress finish. The mattress finishes I think are a little, a little skinnier. These are a little longer. Um, usually the bottom, sometimes the bottom has something on it. I put my initials on mine. So this was the meow block. I stitched this and finished it last year and then my sister stitched it and I'm going to finish it today. So these, when you stitch them, there are a top and a bottom and then a long skinny piece which goes all the way around the side. I have done a little bit of the prep work just so it's a little less stop and start on the video. So what I did is I took her stitching, she had done these two on one piece of fabric and then this big long one had a bunch of extra fabric around it. So I cut each of these to give myself a half an inch outside of this back stitch line. In the chart it calls for you do the stitching and then you do a row of back stitch all the way around all three parts and that is what you're actually sewing up. You're doing a whip stitch between lines of back stitch and then that sews it together and holds it up. And on one side, it goes down, down the edge. Donna used a different fabric. She changed the cats to look like her cats. So when I start this, I cut them all out. I, I trimmed up all my threads and stuff on the back, ironed them, cut them out to be a half an inch. Then I went and I put on my interfacing. So because I'm stuffing this, I do want to use interfacing so that I don't snag any threads when I'm stuffing and also to kind of help it stand up a little bit. So I went in and I measured just inside the backstitch line. Because, I, because I'm going through that line of backstitch, I don't want any extra interfacing in my way. So I measured just inside the backstitch line on all three pieces, both ways, cut my interfacing and ironed it on. Um, you could use just a lightweight, I think the lightest weight is 40, Pelin 44F. I happen to use one that's a little stiffer. It's what I use for project bags, so it's what I have on hand. It is 950F, and the F just means fusible because you iron it down. Um, so I ironed that on, again, I tried to get it inside my line of backstitch and then when I was over at the iron I just ironed both all sides I just ironed them up so that way as I'm going and I want to finger press them up a little more they at least have a starting place so before we stitch the pieces together we need to take the top and add on a piece of wool that goes here in the middle <clears throat> The chart came with a piece of pink. Um, when Donna sewed it, she changed the colors, so the pink wasn't going to really match, and she doesn't really like pink. So I went through my little stash of wool, and we picked out a blue that would match. It has a little bit of yellow in it to kind of pull off some of those cats. So I went in, and again, this is stitched around with two lines of Smyrna stitches. When you put the wool on, you kind of cover up this inner stitch. So I took my ruler, a bit long for what I was doing, and I measured inside that line. I cut it two by two, and then I just kept cutting off a little bit, little bit, little bit, until I got it to sew. It's going to fit pretty much right in there. So to stitch this down, I had her give me the color floss that she used for the Smyrna's, which was the same floss she used for the outside line. I believe in the charts it calls to have your outside line stitched in like a fancy floss. That's a lot of back stitch. So typically I just choose a DMC color that's close enough because I don't want to use a whole bunch of fancy floss just for my back stitch. <laughs> so I'm going to take this little piece of wool and start in one of the corners and I'm just going to do a whip stitch 
to tack that in place. This one I did that stitch, which I don't even know what it's called, where you kind of can see the edge. I'm not very good at that. <clears throat> so I'm just going to do a whip stitch. You could do this before you've ironed your interfacing. Uh, again, I was trying to save a step. It really doesn't matter. So I have one strand of thread with the, I'm going to do a loop start so my loop is on the end. I'm going to come up about a half, about a quarter of an inch. Go back right over the top here. Once I get the first ones in, it's a little easier. And then when I go through on the back, I'll go through that loop. Okay. So then I'm just going to go about quarter inch stitches all the way around to tack this down. These charts are really fun. I, I like a good three-dimensional chart. Um, I have several of these. I hadn't tried one yet because they're a little intimidating. I didn't know how to get that shape, but going along the back stitch line to stitch them together, it's not difficult. It's a little time consuming, um, but really that's it. But if you take your time and you don't even need to do it all in one day, right? You could stitch up one side and set it aside and then come back another time and do the next row. Um, it makes it a fun finish. All right, I'm gonna pause the video so that you don't have to watch me stitch this all the way around and I'm just gonna stitch this piece of wool on and I'll be back. All right, I'm back. I just stitched all the way around. I'm on my last one here. I'm gonna go on the back. I'm just going to just snag a little bit of this interfacing here, come up through and tie a knot, go through my loop tie a knot, I'll cut that off. So now my wool is all attached. So I'm going to get a long piece of floss. Uh, this is on the bobbin. I'll probably, I think I undid like 10, 10 winds of floss because I'm going to do a loop start. So I'm going to double this and pull out one strand set the side, set aside the rest because I will need it because if my, if my string is too long, it gets all tangled up. But if it's not long enough, you're going to need more. So you're definitely going to need more on these. I am using a sewing needle for these, not in a, um, I think it's a tapestry needle. So it's a little sharper on the top. So I'm going to take, I'm going to start with the top and my side. Now on most of these, there's nothing you need to worry about matching up, right? Like this is its own thing and the side is its own thing. Some of the designs have a design that carries over, right? Like it's a tree and the top of the tree is here and the bottom of the tree is on this. So you just need to line it up so that you have the right side together when you're starting it. I know the, she has a Halloween one that has pumpkins and the, the pumpkin is here and then the bottom of the pumpkin is on the bottom panel. So you just need to make sure you're matching those up. This one I, I got lucky because there's nothing I need to match up. So I'm going to take corner to corner here and start to sew them together. So again, I'm whip stitching this line of back stitch all the way through. So I'm gonna take my needle and on my very topmost, and I'm sorry, but I need to hold this a little close to my face. On my topmost stitch, I'm gonna go right under just that little line of back stitch. Pull through, and then do a loop start right there so that I've attached my thread to my fabric. Then I'm going to go on my long strip and again, go through that topmost 
stitch and pull it through. The first few are the hardest because they're not connected yet. <laughs> So that way I have my top two, okay? Then I'm just gonna come up and go down the second stitch. I'm gonna go down on the top here and then come through on the bottom and pull them together. And that's, that's all you do over and over and over. <laughs> So you just go down one, and you could come up one if that's an easier motion for you. Um, it gives you the exact same result in the end. These are a little finicky once you get going. So I am not gonna make you watch me stitch all the way around here because I'll be much faster if I can hold it closer to my eyes. So. I'm going to go ahead and stitch this all the way around. When you get to a corner, you just maneuver this fabric in and keep going. And it will automatically, here's the side, it will just, it'll just curve for you naturally all the way around. So that's what I'm going to do on this one. I'm going to go all the way around and stop when I get back to this edge corner. I will do that and be back. All right, next step complete. I made it down this little side. This didn't take nearly as long, though I did have to kind of hold it. I wasn't able to pinch them together. I had to kind of hold it and go through one side and then the other side. It just was a little more tedious. So now we have three quarters, three quarters done. So again, this edge will be the hardest where you've got all the different pieces. So we're gonna try and fold some of those in Take one of our sides. In my case, it, there's nothing to line up, so it doesn't matter. I'm gonna go through my top stitch here. So your old hat at this by now, right? So just through that top stitch. And then I'm gonna go through my top stitch over here. Pull them together. And then more of the same. My, th my thread's getting a little twisted now. So again, I will just start making my way <clears throat> all along this other edge. And then I will leave a couple inches So I'm just gonna keep going around, around, around. I'll probably leave a couple inches on this side, right on the last side, and that's where we'll stuff. So again, I'm gonna step away so that I can move this closer to my face and see it. Stitch this up, and I will meet you back here when we have a couple inches left, and we'll stuff. We are finally down to the final steps. I sewed all the way around the bottom. I've left myself a couple inches. I'm gonna take my needle right off so that I don't need to worry about losing it somewhere along the way. <laughs> so I have a couple inches here and now I'm going to stuff. Uh, I use fiber fill and then I also have some crushed walnut shells. So I'll kind of sprinkle those in here and there. So I'm gonna do a layer of fiber fill and I've kind of already fluffed this and I'm just gonna start shoving it in. Uh, I did not put yarn. Sometimes if you've watched my finishing videos before, you'll know that I like to put yarn in the corners of my pillows because it helps keep them pointy. Um, I did not on this because the way it's kind of sewn up with that whip stitch, it holds its shape really well. So I'm just gonna start pushing this stuff in. I forgot my little pointer, so I just grabbed an unsharpened pencil and that will work just as well. So I am still poking it pretty good down in the edges. 
I'm going to try and get a layer all the way on the top and then I'll put some walnut shells in. I didn't time myself on this last section going all the way around, but I bet it was a good 30, 40 minutes. All right. So poke all that in. And the walnut shells, if you didn't have them, I wouldn't worry about it. I happen to already have them, and it does give it some weight. That's more of what they're for. So I've got kind of a layer, it's not perfect yet, but a layer on the top. And I'm gonna try not to make a mess. And just kind of sprinkle some of these in there, shake them around, and they help fill in all the little, all the little spots that you might miss with the fiber fill. And then a little more on top of that to hold it in place and then I could give it a good poke. And we have the interfacing on so we don't really need to worry about the fiber fill um, coming out through the holes. So I'm just trying to really get those top edges as good as I can. And also not turning it over and completely tipping everything out. <laughs> do another round of walnuts. I can tell like these corners I have pretty good. These ones up here I'll need to, well, I'm not even in camera, sorry. These corners I have okay. Um, these two need a little more stuffing. the table now. <laughs> and this one is not as stuffed as I usually make, like a, a pillow. It can be kind of hard to get these quite as tight. So really, you just stuff, stuff, stuff until it's as stuffed as you want it, and then you sew up that bottom edge. All right, I think I have enough right there that I can tip it without spilling walnut shells everywhere. So I've got my edges. That actually looks like it will sit pretty well. I might have a little more on this side. So I'm just kind of, you know, testing the flatness. So I think once I get that sewn up, it will be as stuffed as this one. So I'm just going to find my string and my needle. And just sew up this last little section and then clean up all these walnut shells. <laughs> I 
Naturally, this one wants to give me a hard time. There we go. So again, same as we have been doing, one side to the other, trying to keep all that polyfill out of the way. And just finish up. Now, as I'm going here, when I get, you know, a few more rows done, I might stop and give it a squish and see, does it need a little more polyfill, more specifically in this area that I'm doing, like along this line to kind of tuck in this back corner. So I'm going to put you guys on pause and finish this line and then show you how we end off. I have made it all the way around with the tiniest piece of floss to spare. And I'm at the final corner. Now I just went through my final, my final stitch on the side, but to kind of make sure this is good and secure, I'm also going to just kind of match up like my top, top stitch to one on the other side. just to kind of pull those together a little more and then I might go back through two of them on, on again again just to make sure that's good and then when I'm going through these I'm going to go through my tiny tiny loop and make a little knot and then I'm going to take what's left of my thread and run it right under a few of those stitches. Pop it out. And then just snip that off as close as I can. So, there we have it. So now you can kind of squish it around and get it how you want it to be. Um, but your little block is all done. Now you want to know what's funny. Donna and I both did ours on 16 count. Hers was hand dyed. Mine was not. <laughs> and mine is just a little bit bigger than hers is. Um, you can do these blocks on any size fabric that you want. They would be, they'll just be bigger or smaller. Um, so then you would just, if you had the pin set, pop the pins right in for decoration and you're done or use it for your regular pins and needles as you go as a regular pin cushion so I hope that was helpful and you were able to see things like I said it's not it's not a difficult finish it's just time consuming but you could do I stitched the top on this piece and I need a break and then next week I'm gonna go down the side and start working on this it might take you several kind of finishing sessions um, to get it done. I had to do it start to finish today so that I could show you and I bet it took me I bet I've been down here two hours trying to you know start and stop and get things how I need them to be. So I hope it was helpful. I can't wait to see more blocks out there. Um, it's a really fun finish and for those of you who don't like sewing machines, no sewing machine. Just a little patience. Thank you.